Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. Let me ask you a question, Dave. You ever felt like giving up? Just kind of got discouraged and just kind of feel like, you know, no matter what I try, uh, I can't move forward. Well, I want to let you know today you're not alone. So many people uh, just lately, it just seems like, have kind of come out of the, as the old saying goes, out of the woodwork, just saying, you man, I've been discouraged. Just seems like, you know, I take two steps forward and three backwards, or I take two steps forward and one backwards, which, of course, the good news is you're still one forward in the uh, scenario I just used. But most time people feel like they take two steps forward and three backwards, so they're a step further behind and just get discouraged. And, you know, I want to remind you that you're not alone. Uh, that's common. And a lot of times as followers of Jesus, we think, you know, I'm trying to honor you, God, with my one and only life and decisions that I make. And so I just thought it'd be a lot easier. And, you know, I just want to encourage you today that you're not alone. You're not. And uh, there's believers all over the world that are getting uh, just things that are maybe injustices or treated unfairly. And, you know, it gets more common, unfortunately, here in the United States. But the good news is Jesus promises that he would never leave us or forsake us. And it will remind you in the book of Hebrews that it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever and i had a couple people contact me uh, recently about hope is here that where they had been blessed and i uh, sent them something or they had listened to a podcast or i sent them one and i want to share one of them with you uh, this guy that listens faithfully said i don't know how you know when i need you but every time i'm going through a rough patch in life you always pop up I needed to uh, hear this today more than you know. The devil is at me, and I am fighting him every day. Anybody else can relate to that that's listening? Uh, he, he said, the devil is at me, and I'm fighting him every day. I'm trying so hard to keep my head above the water, but I seem like I'm not floating anymore. Anybody else out there, I bet, can relate to that statement, too. He goes on to continue um, what he emailed to me. All of my business seems to be going through their own challenges it's been rough but i always pray and it always seems to work out and that's the truth so a lot of you i think can relate to what this guy said earlier when he just said you know going through a really rough patch and he said uh, the devil's really at me and i'm fighting him every day and he's just trying to keep his head above water and i'm sure a lot of you listening today can relate to that so i just responded back to him god loves you keep seeking him proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 which says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge God, and he will direct your paths, or he will make your path straight. And those two verses there have been game changers for me. Uh, back in 2001, when I had to file bankruptcy, and my wife left me, and I lost my home because I had to put it up for the flood disaster on my business. Um, you know, I didn't know whether I was going forward, backwards, or even if I could keep my head above water. And being brutally honest, I didn't even know if I wanted to live anymore. And yet, that's when my faith became real from reading God's word each day and reading Proverbs, whatever the day of the week was. Um, the day that uh, I think that you, you'll probably be hearing this, if you're hearing it you know, live or on podcast, would be like July, uh, let's say the 19th, well, July 19th, chapter 19 would be the example. On the 20th of July, you would read chapter 20. And on day three, it was Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, 6. And so you can cling to those verses. And sometimes now when I get discouraged, I go back to those uh, verses that when God in 2001, when my faith became real, I accepted Jesus at the age of 12. But at the age of 36, I had to reevaluate, was God real? And David Kibler shared about that, his faith, when they had to bury a 10-year-old son. I mean, man, that's when your faith becomes real. And as I've heard Joyce Meyer say so many times, you either become bitter or better. And you either go forward or you go backwards. And I'm thankful that by God's grace and encouragement of family and friends that I was able to move forward. And that's why I do hope is here to help you move forward when you feel like you're drowning or you're going backwards. Uh, this gentleman went on to share with me, you know, I'm a success story in my own, uh, he said, rhyme, I think you meant time. He said, I was molested as a kid. I was raised in an abusive household. I dropped out of school in the eighth grade and became a convicted felon at the age of 18. I got married, 
but unfortunately, a year later, I got divorced. And then I got into drugs, he said. It was bad for a long time. I never lost sight of the Lord, though. Now I'm a 40-year-old man who has three businesses, and they might not be doing the best right now, but they're still mine. I have a wonderful wife and son. I have family and friends. I'm still a work in progress. That's a word for somebody today. You know, you're like, I just don't feel like I've got it all together. And you know what? I don't know anybody that does. Yet Satan's great lie to a lot of us is, is that you see somebody and just because on the outside they look great, like they're happy, have nice clothes, and maybe uh, kid people, they're tall, thin, and with hair, and, uh, you know, uh, they drive a nice car, and they live in the, quote, right neighborhood and all those things. You sit there and you think, you know, they don't have any pain or heartache. And yet, I know that that is a lie straight from the pit of hell that don't be fooled on the outside. It's just like you could see a car that looks great, but until you open up the hood, and if it didn't have an engine in it, you know, it really wouldn't be a very good car because without an engine that's several thousand dollars, doesn't matter how good the outside looks, the engine, without a good engine or an engine, period, the car's not going anywhere. And so I want to remind you today, don't be fooled on the outside of what you see with people. It is very, very um confusing because you and i say confusing or deceptive is the word i look for i apologize it's deceptive you don't know what's going on on the inside i'm so thankful in the bible that it says people look on the outside but god looks at the heart and i want to encourage you today just to take care of your heart it's the most important investment that you can do proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says above all else guard your heart for it is the foundation of everything. Yet, friends, if we're brutally honest, uh, so many times the things we watch on TV, uh, movies we go see, uh, maybe people that we hang out with, books we read, conversations we have, uh, just things we do are not God-honoring. And I'm not trying to uh, do fire and brimstone uh, talking to you here today. Uh, man, I am a guy full of grace because I've needed extended to me numerous occasions throughout my life but i also want to encourage you today that your life could be a lot more peaceful and you could be encouraged more if you are very protective of your one and only heart and uh remember when my dad had triple bypass surgery back in 1990 in december of 1990 and i know it's changed a lot since then but when he came out got to finally come home after probably about a week or so being in the hospital you know, he had staples where they had cracked his chest open to get in and do the heart surgery. Well, you know, he obviously had a, a scar from that over the years. And, you know, it just started as I started growing my uh, relationship in Christ. And, you know, my dad had a, a V-neck shirt on or something. You could still see a little bit of that scar. And it just really spoke clearly to me one day that how much God does protect our hearts physically with our rib cages you know you you cannot get to the heart very easily and so that that verse proverbs 4:23 really came to life to me about above all else guard your heart for it's the foundation of everything well god physically protected it greatly but you know what the other part of that verse that i think is so so important is the emotional and the mental part of what do we do to protect our hearts and are you doing things, spending time with God's Word and reading it and maybe reading books uh, that, you know, encourage you in your faith, uh, even music? And, I mean, you know, man, I love 80s music, and I like a little bit of country, and, um, you know, I, I like lots of different types of music, some jazz, classical occasionally, even, believe it or not, a little bit old school rap and rock and roll. And But the point being is, you know, you can't fix your mind constantly on things that are not pushing you closer to God, or you will get weak, and you will get weary. Galatians 6, 9 is a great verse. It says, do not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. And I know for some of you today, you're really discouraged that you're thinking, you know, I don't know if things are not going to or things are going to get any better. And I'm here today to remind you they will get better. Jesus said, with people it may look impossible, but with God 
all things are possible. And though you may not have got the answer that you want right now, God is working behind the scenes. And I'm so thankful to know that Romans 8.28 that helped me so many times since 1997 when the flood happened on March 1st and my life was changed forever, that all things work together for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So if you're a follower of Jesus, God has a purpose for your one and only life. And I just want to remind you that, you know, prayer, we make it really, really complicated, but prayer is just a conversation with God. I mean, it's great if you can get on your knees and be in a room where it's quiet and, you know, uh, I wouldn't say dark, but, you know, just where you can really be focused on God. But some of my best prayer time happens in the shower or on the way to a meeting, uh, on the way to work, and I just turn the radio off and, you know, put my phone under something so I don't see it and not tempted to look at it and getting away from social media and just talk with God. But one of the things I really want to encourage you today is just to listen to God. The Bible talks about in the book of James, be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. Wow. There's a lot of wisdom. I could do a whole program on that verse in James. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Friends, God wants to share information with us, but we have to become good listeners. And Part of that is just doing what Psalm 46, 10 says, and it says, Be still and know that I am God. And I struggle with that, but I want to encourage you that you can do that. And when you put yourself in a position to listen to God, you will know that he will speak to you. But that James 1, 19, be quick to listen. Slow to speak and slow to listen is huge. And I love uh, the first part of the verse says, Everyone. I didn't add that part, but everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And friends, as I've gotten older, I've really tried to be careful about speaking when I'm emotional, when I get offended, when I get hurt. Uh, there's a great book out that I just got recently that I'm looking forward to read called Unoffendable. Then there's a, bu a book written by John Bevere that's one of my top ten all favorite time all time favorite books called The Bait of Satan, which basically talks about how Satan loves to get us offended, especially by people that are followers of Jesus, our brothers and sisters in Christ, and also uh, you know um, family members and people that are close to us. Uh, you know, he knows what your weak spots are, but I just want to encourage you today to not give up no matter what's going on inside you. If you will keep your eyes on Jesus and trust what God says about you, not what your situation says about you or what the world says about you, you'll be amazed at what God will do. And a verse that's helped me so many times when I felt like giving up or just got so discouraged, I want to quit whatever situation it could be in my life is Psalm 28, 7. And it says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in you, Lord, and I am helped. And you can count on that today, that Jesus will take care of you. You just have to remain in faith. You've got to stand strong, even through the tears, the heartache, the disappointment, the loneliness, the hard times. Jesus is still on the throne, and he wants to be your strength and your shield. And as you put your hope in him, your heart will find that it has helped. I'm Greg Horn. We'll look forward to seeing you next time on Hope Is Here. Do you have a real estate question and don't know where to start? Contact Cecil Holmes with Rector Hayden Realtors. Whether you're in the market, looking to buy, sell, or rent a house, Cecil Holmes would be glad to help you with any real estate questions you have. Give him a call today at 326-0756. That's 326-0756. Cecil Holmes with Rector Hayden Realtors.